Hello Floss Tube friends, uh, here is a Floss Tube Extra, um, I'm going to apologise straight away first of all for any wobble that you get, like so, seriously sorry, um, it's not the sturdiest of tables, secondly it's for any road noise that you hear in the background because the best and brightest room in the house happens to be right at the front and there's plenty of road noise because it's the main road that I live on. I asked on Instagram if anybody would like to see me do a finish on one of these lovely Mill Hill kits. So I've recently finished this one, which is, um, let me just find the number reference. This is MH18-9206 Halloween. It's from the Autumn Harvest collection. Um, it's a fab kit, actually, the photograph on the actual, I don't know if this is gonna work if I bring this in. But the photograph, I think, if you look side by side, it doesn't actually do it justice with how just how sparkly that is. If I can get some sparkle going there, look at that green and purple. So it was quite a quick finish, managed to do it in a week. And now time to do an FFO on this. So first things first, I have got a really snazzy pair of scissors here that are Tim Holtz. We've got quite a good sharp point. And hopefully I'll be able to do all of this in camera. But we start off by snipping all the way round. If I bring this up a little bit closer, you might be able to see it. Here we go, let's see. You need to leave at least a line in between where you're cutting and where the last lot of stitching is. And we do this all the way around. Now I always cut first because it means that I use less glue. And it also means that um, I cut a piece of fabric that's the right size rather than a big piece and then waste a load. I tend to do the straight lines first and then I'll come back in and fussy cut in some places later on. So I'm looking for that. I just love the noise this makes as well. Because <laughs> I'm weird. But it is quite satisfying. On there. So I'll probably speed this up for you. Round the edges off a little bit. If need be, and you're not too precious about your embroidery scissors, this, excuse me, <laughs> then you can actually bring your embroidery scissors in to do a little bit more fussy cutting. So you can round off those edges a lot neater. So they're not quite so pointy. Oop, put that into the camera. Put that one in there as well. If I was minded so to do, I would cut those holes out as well there. And possibly just in here too. I don't know how well you can see those, just in here. Because I quite like the open look. But at the moment, yeah, I think I might. So really carefully go in, 
trim, trim, clip. It's not much, is it? It's just a little tiny bit in the middle. Same down here. Okay, it's much more open. Always neaten that up a little bit. I think that might be a bit, a bit problematic in there, but let's give it a go. I think that'll do. Just keep that away. Right. So as you can see, it just sort of opens it up a little bit. Now the other problem that we have with working with perforated paper, particularly with ones that have been painted, is that once you cut it, I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to see it, but <clears throat> that edge, particularly here, you can see it really well here, it's actually white. So the paper is white and is then painted. You can see that on the back it's white. And if we then put that against black felt, <coughs> you can see it really well. So, so grab a Sharpie and it won't work with the really fine tip ones. You're gonna have to use a thick tip one because we're gonna stroke that along that edge. And hopefully you can see it's just starting to color that in. And you'll have to excuse the meowing cat behind me who's just shown up. Thinks he can join in. I'll just go around here really quickly. Doesn't take much, doesn't need to be OTT. Just enough to just take some of that shine off that edge that you've trimmed. So it's less obvious and if you obviously if you're using a different color paper this one's black but if you're using something else say like a green go around it with green the tan colored ones don't tend to be quite such a problem because they are just craft colored aren't they craft with a k of course this is where um, it doesn't matter if you slip and mark the back of course so always work with the back facing towards you on the side that your pen is on because you're less likely to slip the other way you'll slip this side um, but of course if you've trimmed it to within an inch of its life you've then got to get into all those little sort of nooks and crannies to try and get rid of some of that whiteness that you can see She says, turning this around the wrong way. <laughs> so don't do as I do, do as I tell you, and you'll be fine. Just watch out for, put my glasses on to make sure I haven't missed any bits that are really glaring obvious. You can go back in and check them, but it's just, it's easier to do this when you haven't got the felt on it already. It's really obvious just there, isn't it, that, that edge. Just knocks the brightness back a little bit makes it look just a little bit more finished it's brilliant but the only other way you can get this absolutely perfect is to trim off all of these dots so if i was to just to give it a go just here and take all of that edge right off so it's smooth which some people do and then 
colour that edge in you see you catch more of the more of the dipped in bits so now we'll just finish this off best we can I think that's done I've done all that edge already so there you go catch that bit and it just makes it a little less there you are. I'll do that now See that although it's, there is still that white edge, did I miss that bit? I don't think I did. There we go. Although there is still that white edge, it's not as obvious, it just looks a bit more finished. Right, so next thing, I have to forgive the plot, but well used, well loved. <laughs> I have got this big tub of PVA glue. And this is going to frighten the life out of some of you, I'm sure. I've also got a school glue spreader. And I'm literally going to run glue across the back, like so. That should be enough, I think. Just pop another drop just there. Oh, that's going to freak many of you out. But what this also helps to do it's going to be hanging on your Christmas tree or uh, another type of tree or hanging up somewhere in your house however it will give them a bit more rigidity and stability and it also means that if there are any of these threads that you haven't quite caught in properly it will secure them so I've got to be mindful you see here there's a gap here I don't really want to put glue in there because that will drip through to the other side but what we do is we just very carefully spread it Take it up to the edges where we can. Okay. I'll speed this up again for you as well. But go right to that edge. Because that's where you want your felt. And you can always add more glue if you don't want to put too much on to begin with. I've done this lots and lots of times, so I've got a reasonably good idea of how much glue I'm going to need. Even I don't tend to go completely mad at first. And it will soak in, of course. Wow, love motorbike. <laughs> So, I mean, you can put the glue on there, you've just got to be careful not to spread it too much. It will go clear anyway. So not quite enough glue, just a little tiny drop short. So, I'll just what I do now is I'm going to try and put it on the fabric. I'm going to add it onto my spreader. Yep. It's just there, and then I've got more control about where I put it. Let's put a bit more down there. A bit more there. glued and what I'm going to do because this one's got a nice straight edge to it I'm not going to pre I haven't pre-cut the fabric what I'm actually going to do is turn it the other way up and I am going to pop that down so that I use as little or waste as little fabric as possible and there's a much less um, cutting to do as well I'll probably neaten the edge up anyway but You'll notice I haven't yet put the hanger on it. I do the hanger afterwards in this particular instance, but you can do it before if you wish. <clears throat> there we go. And then what I'm going to do, I've got a pair of fabric scissors. I'll be really careful with my fabric scissors not to catch the paper. Just gonna 
loosely trim around the edge there just to move the big piece of fabric away and it is it is going to curl because you've made it wet so you may need to press it a bit later on between two books to smooth out looking good so far and you can either be um, really patient and wait for this to dry or you can do what I do which is what I'm going to do now and that is to go in and be more particular with your trimming and this does make a mess with felt I'm sure most of you already know this by now I'll come back and cut the other direction in a minute but I'm being really careful not to cut the, cut the paper because obviously these are fabric scissors And we don't want to cut into the paper and damage the scissors. I'll go in and do that with a smaller pair in a minute. And it cuts along there. I'm going to round that corner off. see I've kind of under provided there with the fabric um, that's not the end of the world nobody's really going to notice that and then we're going to go back in and cut the other direction neaten that up in a minute Goodness. <laughs> fine fine fibres and now I'm going to get my my needle, my, needle, my embroidery scissors, and just go in and catch those odd threads that are need a bit of tidying up, and in here. So probably go back in with the sharpie. Just work it gently until it's neat enough and the same thing applies in there. It's a bit like doing a buttonhole really. There's a bit of weight that's popped up thanks to not quite such careful trimming. We just go in very carefully, cover that up a bit. There you go. I'm not going to trim that one for the moment, I'll come in and do that at a separate moment. So now we've got this trimmed. We now have to add a nice hanger. So, 
Let us grab a mat for the beads. And what I've done to save a bit of time here. So I have pre-threaded a beading needle, a beading needle that came with the kit actually, with some Nymo black beading thread is the, the reel which I've acquired in my travels. Um, for those people who are in the UK, Spellbound Beads will stock these uh, and other kits as well. But obviously if you're doing a, a different coloured kit, so this applies with any of these, go with the colour that is going to go best with the threads that you're working with. So if you've done it with a different colours, if you're working for example with these silver ones, well, these ones are the Petite Ice, um, Mill Hill 42010. You'd use a white thread, but I'm not planning on using those I'm, because these are petite and these are regular sized, um, I can't think of the number, size 10 or something or other, or size 8 seed bead. I want to use the dark thread instead, so I'll just move that to one side for the moment. I'm going to need quite a few. So I've got here my bags. I've pre-sorted all of my beads. So we'll put quite a few there. Those are the green ones. So this is Mill Hill 02085 and this is 02031. This is lime colour. I like those. I didn't want pink as well. But you can do any combination that you like. Any at all. There's no rules on this one. And because I'm going to do, in this instance, I'm going to do a hanger that goes from one end to the other. If you were doing a single one that was going top to bottom, you would work in the round. But because I'm going from side to side, it's done ever so slightly differently what I would do in this instance is I'm going to loop my finger, looped it round, rolled it and it's made several turns. So we've got basically we've got a knot there and what I will do is I will run that through the back. I mean you could do this before before you put your, your gluey bit on. I'll try and get it to come Roughly there, that's where I want it to come out. And that is hidden in the back. We'll hide that in a minute and trim that off. And I'm going to do a couple of turns over there. I'm going to actually take this ultimately to about here, I suppose. Yeah, about there. And then you just do whatever colour rain you would like to do. So I think I'm going to go with threes because three is a nice number. We pick up three and three and so on and so forth. If you've got a longer bead in here, you can get more beads on it at once. And you just work it. Oh, there's one still stuck there. So again, we're going to go with a time lapse. Every so often keep checking the length make sure you haven't done too many obviously if you don't have enough beads left however many beads you've got left in your kit once you've finished making it will define how and what pattern you use to be perfectly honest with you um, but because I've been doing so many Mill Hill kits over the years and have also built up a reasonably good stash of them I actually have more than they supply in every single colour so I've, I'm a bit blessed in that way, but I think we can probably do another another nine beads. 
the last nine, maybe. One, two, three, there we go. That'll do. I think that would be just nice, actually. I don't want it to hang too low. I have noticed I've got a little half wick bead there. Hmm. Not sure I like that. I'm a bit fussy, you see. So, do I live with it? No, I don't live with it. I don't like that at all. So, how do we cure that? Right, what I do is I run that beading needle all the way back through those. I've got a bead I don't like. So, I'm going to run my beading needle back through. lay these out so the moral of that story folks is to check your beads as you're going along in case you find one that's a random size or shape by accident so there we go right there's the bead I don't like there Where'd it go? Which one was it? That one there. You see it's a bit skinny. Put it to one side. Let's go in the bin. Never be afraid to go, I don't like that one. I'm gonna chuck it in the bin. bit there we go right and you'll probably notice as well started with purple finished with purple it's because I am a bit fussy shall we say and as we've come out the front we want to go back in the front so I'm going to take it back in there okay Right, but I want it to sit above. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going back in. I'm just hoping you can see it. I'm going to go back in here because one strand isn't generally enough with these. So we need to run this this way. Oh, of course. You're going to make sure that your length of thread is long enough so that you can do two or three back and forth like this. And you just run it all the way along. It just makes it that bit more secure. bit fiddly. Maybe that. Yeah. You can see it's quite it's much more sturdy now. And I'm gonna give it one more pass, so we're going back in that way. And we're going to come up out the back. You see that coming out of the back here. And I'm going to pick those beads up there. And it helps stop the whole thing falling forwards as it's hanging. Because it's balanced. And this will get a little more tricky as well. So make sure you're using your beading needle for this. Because now you've got three strands of thread in the back there. And just 
Feed that through again. paying attention was I? Look at that. Bear with me. Okay. Got glue and felt dust up my nails already. Okay. Oops. These last few beads secured in this final pass through. And then go back in that hole that you went in first time. You can, if you wish, secure it through another hole and down. Finishing off your thread another hole and down and I'm going to go back up there through several of these beads okay and scissors very very carefully snip that there you go. Trim that over there. It's just there. Where the original knot was. The other way you could do it is to do exactly the same. Start with a long tail. Feed it through a couple of times. Then start your beading backwards and forwards. Finish the end off. And then you go back and you thread your needle with that thread and wind that one up through there. But there you go. It hangs. So, so, hope you enjoyed this little mini tutorial. It's a bit longer than I expected, but uh, one hill hill ornament. If you want any other videos on any tutorials on finishing some of these items off, please do let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for other videos that I do in the future and see you soon. Bye!